so students we are going to move to the next section which is the minor loss and as we know that the total loss which is denoted by hl total is e equals to the minor losses plus the major losses so this is hl major and this is hl minor so since in the previous section we have already gone through how to calculate the major losses in this section we are going to move to how to calculate the minor losses usually what happens is that the fluid in a typical piping system passes through various fittings valves bends elbows tees and inlets as you can see we have got reducer tees we have got elbows reducers union etc so these are minor things which are required for connecting pipes and it is through these components that minor losses occur these components interrupt the smooth flow of the fluid and cause additional losses because of the flow separation and mixing that they do so in these components flow separation occurs and mixing also occurs in a typical system with long pipes these losses are minor so if i've got a very long piping network and i've got very few let's say wells or something okay and uh, uh, so in in very long piping systems these minor losses are not very significant and the major losses are basically the major part of the total losses however in generally in some cases the minor loss can be greater than the major loss in in some of the cases for example in system with several turns so let's say if i'm going to convert this piping systems into many elbows then i've got uh, reducers then i've got expanders etc then i've got the t so if if i've got many uh, minor components okay one two three four then what is going to happen is that they are going to be the majority of losses will be caused by the minor losses so uh, for instance if my valve is fully open then there is no loss but if my valve is partially open okay then the fluid has to uh, restrict and then move so in this case the minor losses would be significant so for instance a partially closed valve may cause the largest head loss in a system as evidenced by the drop in the flow rate flow through valve and fittings are is very complex and a theoretical analysis is generally not plausible therefore minor losses are determined experimentally and usually it is given by the manufacturer of the components so the question is that how to calculate minor losses first of all minor losses is denoted by loss coefficient so it is called loss coefficient and it is denoted by kl it is also called uh, resistance coefficient as well resistance coefficient okay this is denoted by kl and how do we determine this basically when the inlet diameter of a pipe and the outlet diameter of the pipe are uh, equal okay and the loss coefficient of the component can be determined by measuring the pressure loss so pressure loss across these components so i can determine the uh, loss coefficient by measuring the pressure loss special loss is p1 minus p2 which is delta p okay so pressure loss is denoted by delta pl so i can determine it by pressure loss across the component and divide it dividing it by dynamic pressure so i can basically write this equation as delta pl is equals to kl this is the minor loss coefficient into rho v average square whole divided by 2 so by uh, putting uh, right hand side you know towards the left hand side i can calculate the pressure loss and the uh, resistance coefficient or the loss coefficient and uh, we need to note that kl is independent of renold number except that of the outlet the loss coefficient in general depends on the geometry so if my uh, divider is something like that elbow or if my elbow is smooth okay then it is going to have a significant difference in loss coefficient obviously a very sharp uh, bend will have a loss coefficient very high and for this smoother elbow the loss coefficient will be smaller so the loss coefficient depends on the geometry as well as the Reynolds number but usually what happens is that it is usually assumed that kl is independent of Reynolds number this is reasonable approximation since most of the flow impact is a very large Reynolds number and the so loss now that we know the pressure loss due to the minor components minor loss coefficient then we need to calculate the head loss hl so hl uh, can be calculated hl minor can be calculated by dividing pressure loss minor whole divided by rho g so this hl minor comes out to be kl v average square whole divided by 2 g so this is the minor loss due to components or fittings there is additional uh, way which is not included in the book nor it is included in the course this is l equivalent l equivalent what happens is that they convert the fittings small fittings the elbows into uh, a, an equivalent length of the pipe so they are going to convert uh, the losses due to them into l 
equivalent and then using that uh, they are going to convert it into my major so basically the minor losses can be converted to major losses through l equivalent and the formula for that is hl is equals to f l equivalent whole divided by d basically what they are doing is that they are adding the normal pipe length plus the length of uh, equivalent length of the fittings and etc so the formula comes out to be hl equals to f l equivalent over d times v square over 2 g so so through this also some manufacturers uh, do use these uh, data normally mechanical engineering services usually use this for calculating the losses however uh, we are going to use this expression in our course for the calculation of minor losses so as i said earlier uh, the head loss uh, due to minor components or the loss coefficient is a strong function of geometry it is almost negligible for well-rounded inlets so if you see a well-rounded inlet this is a well-rounded inlet having a rounding radius r okay then you can see that the kl is 0 0.03 okay however if you are going to compare it with a very sharp edged object then the kl is 0 0.5 so it's quite quite higher than the uh, fitting which has a, a rounded corner so this is that sharp edge inlet so the reason and the theory behind it, it is that if we have got a sharp edge inlet okay then half of the velocity head is lost as the fluid enters the pipe so the velocity is basically lost this is because the fluid cannot make sharp 90 degree turn easily especially at high velocity so at high velocity the fluid cannot just directly make a 90 degree t turn as a result the flow separates at the corner so in these corners if you see these here the flow separates out and a new region is formed and the flow is constricted into a vena contractor region this region is called vena contractor okay here in this vena contractor uh, region with this which is formed at the mid section the fully a sharp etched inlet acts like a flow constriction the velocity increase in the vena contractor region and the pressure decreases because of the reduced flow area so since the effective flow area has reduced so the velocity increases but the pressure decreases however once the uh, flow moves downstream what happens is that the velocity reduces because the flow rate has to be maintained so the velocity increases in the vena contractor region however then it is decreases as the flow fills the entire cross section of the pipe there would be negligible loss of pressure if the pressure was in increasing in accordance to Bernoulli equation however due to this phenomena uh, deceleration processes uh, basically uh, produced and viscous dissipation is caused by intense mixing and turbulent eddies so what, these are basically what happens the turbulent eddies are formed okay and viscous region is basically formed and because of that intense mixing and turbulent eddies a part of kinetic energy is converted into kinetic energy is converted into heat energy and this is basically loss so the velocity head is loss this result in a drop in velocity without much pressure recovery and the inlet loss is the measure of irreversible pressure drop so the pressure drop cannot be recovered that is why it is very important that when you're designing components you need to take care how much should be the uh, chamfer radius okay how much how, how much should be the bent okay whether the flow is getting a smooth streamlined flow or whatever the flow is constricted these are something which we need to consider when designing uh, piping systems so in the previous slide we saw the difference between sharp and uh, well-rounded corner and what's the difference in the minor loss coefficient now we are going to see how the minor loss coefficient is different for piping at inlet and for piping for exit so let's take a look, uh, look at piping for inlet so when we talk about piping for inlet systems we have got three uh, systems number one is re-entrant number two is sharp etched and number three is well-rounded or slightly rounded system so when we talk about uh, re-entrance system, we can see that a part of the pipe is protruding inside the vessel. Okay, so there are many cases, for instance, usually in tanks, we can see that the part of pipe is protruding in inside the vessel. So this is called re-entrant. And here you can see that the KL loss coefficient is 0 0.80. It is quite high. But once I remove this protruding section here, as in case number two, we can see that the loss coefficient is reduced to 0 0.50. And once I further reduce and make it well-rounded, okay, the inlet system then you can see that the kl is 0 0.03 to 0 0.12 and it depends on the ratio of the r the uh, curve radius hold divided by the pipe diameter so if the ratio is greater than 0 0.2 then we are going to use kl value 0 0.03 and vice versa now we move to pipe exit now pipe exit is a very different thing because what happens is that the flow is coming in and is mixing with the uh, fluid in the vessel so at any such exit and uh, any of these exit you can see 
what happens is that whether the flow is laminar or turbulent okay the fluid leaving the pipe loses all of its kinetic energy so the kinetic energy is basically lost because the fluid is mixing with the uh, fluid in the tank and it, as it mixes with the reservoir of fluid eventually it comes to rest through irreversible action of the viscosity this is true regardless of the shape of the exit so that is why whatever the shape whether it is corner or whether it is well-rounded sharp or re-entry you can see that the KL is equals to alpha okay and the alpha is basically uh, more precisely however KL is equals to the kinetic energy correction factor alpha so alpha is kinetic <coughs> energy correction factor okay and this is different for laminar and different for turbulent so alpha is indeed close to one for fully developed turbulent so here you can see that for fully developed uh, turbulent flow the alpha is close to one almost equal to one whereas for laminar flow it is equals to num two however for the sake of uh, differentiating we write a loss coefficient kl is equals to uh, the kinetic energy correction factor and for all three cases of pipe exit we are going to use alpha and we are going to calculate first whether the flow is laminar or turbulent if the flow is turbulent we are going to use one if the flow is laminar we are going to use two so when we talk about piping system piping system often involves sudden or gradual expansion or contraction here is an example of a sudden expansion the flow is expanding suddenly and here the flow is contracting suddenly this is to accommodate changes in flow rate so basically to accommodate changes in flow rate or to accommodate uh, or in control uh, such as density or velocity we actually use these fittings and the losses are usually much greater in the case of certain expansion and contraction because of flow separation so once again the flow separation theory comes up so by combining the equations of a mass moment and energy balance the loss coefficient for certain expansion can be calculated as kl is equals to one minus small diameter so this is the small diameter this is the large diameter <laughs> okay capital d small diameter is small d square and that is whole square the another formula which is given in the book is kl for a certain expansion is equals to alpha times one minus area small over area large square square whole square okay so this is one uh, another formula for calculating certain expansion where alpha is the loss <coughs> kinetic energy correction factor now when we talk about uh, sudden contraction we need to consult this chart okay and for instance we need to calculate uh, t square over capital d square ratio and using that we need to intersect so let's say if my d square over d square ratio is 0.4 then what i'm going to do is i'm going to intersect my uh, x-axis with the curve and on the y-axis i will get loss coefficient so maybe perhaps kl comes out to be 0 0.2875 something so this is how you calculate loss coefficient for sudden expansion or sudden contraction and next we are going to see that if the expansion or contraction is not sudden but it is basically gradual so if there is an angle contraction or an angle expansion then what will happen and here are some of the examples for uh, expansion and contraction uh, varying with respect to angle and this is an increase in angle from 20 to 60 degree for expansion joint and we can see that the loss coefficient kl is increasing as the angle is also increasing so when you look at contraction then uh, for data is available only for 20 degrees okay and as the diameter small dia to large dia ratio increases okay so does the uh, loss coefficient it decreases so loss coefficient decreases as the uh, dot ratio increases so here is an example of uh, bends and piping branches okay one thing to note is that for same kind of uh, bend you can see that the flange and threaded joint have different loss coefficient and if you look at flange it has a lesser loss coefficient than the threaded one and that is i don't think three times lesser than the threaded one what happens is that when you've got a flange then a flange is something like a circular extent and then you've got another pipe which also has the same flange okay and the pipes are basically joined uh, more smoothly and the flanges are basically bolted so this is an example of flange joint however when we talk about threaded uh, joints then we've got basically some uh, threads here and then the uh, other pipe basically comes up within the thread so there is more loss coefficient kl is higher whereas for flange joints the kl is uh, lesser and this is something which you will observe for mitral bend as well threaded elbows etc uh, that threaded has more kl and flange has less kl so if you look at a mitral bend 90 degree meter bend okay there are two types one is without veins and one is with veins so when we have without veins then the kl is quite high 1.1 Whereas when we have uh, guide veins available, these guide veins basically enhances an easiness of flow. So these uh, guide veins basically reduce it almost uh, like five times. So then we have got threaded elbows. Uh, they have a constant KL of 0 0.4, uh, 
and then we have got 180 degree u-turn or uh, return bends okay then we have got t branches these 180 return bends you can see in so if we look at the t branch flow uh, you can see the difference between flanged and threaded joint so and uh, if you see for a t line flow and branch flow then uh, the kl is a bit lesser because here in this t you want the flow to move uh, in 90 degrees whereas here in this t you want the flow to move uh, straight and then you've got a threaded union this is something which i was talking about so unions uh, also have uh, some loss coefficient so here are some examples for loss coefficient for different types of valves okay and uh, as you can see here uh, the globe valve has the highest loss coefficient uh, when it is fully open which is followed by ankle valve swing valve and then the last one is ball valve so ball valve is sometimes usually used in our uh, daily uh, homemade uh, piping systems and if you look at gate valve then when it is fully open then the loss coefficient is quite less but as we close it and start closing it halfway then the loss coefficient increases tenfold and if we close it three by four then the loss coefficient always is like uh, uh, like 100 times more than when it is fully open so these are some things which we need to uh, see and take care uh, when designing